Bom dia. I'm Alan. I'm here with my wife, Leslie. We're from the United States and now live in Portugal on the beautiful island of Madeira. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Our goal here with It'll Be Fun is to help you on your journey by sharing our experiences with you. Yeah. So we thought we would give you an update on travel. Since we've been here, we've done a little bit of travel, but we have quite a bit of travel planned for over the next six months. But every six weeks will be someplace new. Mm -hmm. But that travel all has to do with Europe. Um, it's cost effective. And so we'll be going through all of that. So. People have been asking about Greer. So Greer, um, for those of you who don't know, she is our little Cairn Terrier. She is older. We adopted her before COVID. So we don't know how old. Um, she has a weight issue and as we were, anybody watching the channel, you watch the old one, you can kind of see her getting larger and larger as we go, but we're doing a lot of walks and she, I mean, she was doing big walks. And, but then as time went forward, we realized that um, she was it was affecting her heart. Yeah, yeah. It was, she was struggling a lot. So we took her to have, you know, normal checkups, teeth cleanings, all of those things. Um, they checked her heart and at that point we needed an ultrasound. So she did an ultrasound, discovered that test, she yeah. has a Cushing's disease, which means she's going to have a limited lifespan uh, from here on out. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like heat, you know, heat is a problem, so we have to watch for that. Her weight will become better. Her little pot belly, if you've seen her, the little pot belly is part of the Cushing's disease. And then you'll see pictures of her where she looks so cute with her tongue hanging out because she's a pretty dog, but that's actually a bad thing. Yeah, so. she gets winded easy. She's an old girl, so but we're gonna keep her going as long as possible. Yeah. She still loves life. She still has a good, happy uh, time mm -hmm. with us. Uh, we have to limit the amount of exercise she gets just because of, she's so old. It's too much, yeah, right, it's just, it's just too much. So anyway, that's the update with Greer. Um, to dive in, we got some, it'll be fun uh, merchandise. Yeah. And so we did we did a number of different t-shirts we got it'll be fun little ones mm -hmm. and then we got life is short you know, the thing i say all the time and then we've got you know we should have done this sooner yeah. and we have women's and men's uh all different colors not just Ooh. white and gray Ooh, and oh oh and these you know they're travel yeah it's you it's know. <laughs> high quality high quality yeah it's good stuff so anyway we'll put links yeah. in the descriptions if you were interested in getting any of the t-shirts or merchandise it'll be there for you mm -hmm. um, next we have questions uh, that our patreons put in every month and so we're going to kind of run down through those we'll share this with everyone um, keep in mind that the details and specific vendors all of that is available inside of patreon um, but let's get going mm -hmm. Many people ask about the U.S. elections. Obviously, we have elections coming up in the United States in another year and a half. And so preparing to be able to vote or not vote as an expat mm -hmm. is something that we're all concerned with. Mm -hmm. So, Yes. Uh, as a U.S. citizen, you are legally able to vote in uh, U.S. elections uh, by an absentee ballot. Um, check with your state that you're with and see how to register and apply to do that. Um, We'll put the, there's a, there's link. a link, in the, so we'll I'm going to put the, the link in the description yeah. below. Mm -hmm. um, that link will have you filter to the state that you last lived in, mm -hmm. and you'll go ahead and sign up for your federal elections there. You'll be able to choose if you would like to vote in the state or the local elections. Uh, the Portuguese driver's license. Portuguese driver's license. Mm -hmm. um, well, first off, I enlisted the aid of the automotive club here in, in Madeira, yeah. it's ACP Automotive Club of Portugal. Uh, right, so you'll need your SEF card, your passport, SEF, yeah. your uh, medical certificate, mm -hmm. yep. and then realistically we were talking, um, you know, they'll set it all up, you can turn in your license. If you're over 60, you'll right. be requested to turn it in. If you're under 60, then the, the laws are a little different. You, um, can, you can keep your foreign license. So you can license, keep your yeah. foreign license. If you're under 60 years old, yeah. Until that foreign license expires. Right. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you're going to trade it in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, it's a simple swap. You don't have to take a test. 
Right. Which is nice. No drivers, no written or driving tests, as long as you have a legal license. Right. One right? thing. One thing to be aware of. I was unable to transfer the um, the validity of being able to ride a motorcycle, uh, you know, open motorcycle in Portugal. Uh, with the regular driver's license, however, you can ride a scooter, uh, a motorcycle, up to 125. So you can do that with a regular driver's license. Pets. So when you're traveling with your pets, when you first come over, you're going to need a health certificate, an EU health certificate, which we have a whole video on that, so you can watch that. We also have a checkoff list inside of Patreon that will help guide you through it uh, pretty much step by step. Um, but your EU pet certificate, once you get it, is good for four months. Then when you get here, you'll go to the vet and you'll get that turned into an EU passport, which for that animal, um, that passport, the requirements essentially are very similar to the same requirements you needed for the EU pet certificates, which is their chip, their rabies right, shot, right. the physical, that they're in good condition. Um, you could be asked for, you know, things like showing that they've had the proper flea medication or that kind of um, piece. But in most cases, you won't. Not for the, not when you're coming straight from your health certificate to your EU passport. You'll be able to have that. That makes you uh, safe to travel in the EU with the animal. So, if you just do it right away, it's not a big deal. Or in our case, we knew that Greer, who's over here making lots of noises. <laughs> over here playing as we're talking about pets. Um, so. Is, we knew she was, we literally weren't going to, she was older, she's an older girl. We weren't going to make her ride around in airplanes, you know, all around Europe. That simply when we travel, she stays here with a trusted caregiver mm -hmm. um, for her. Um, so the, one of the next questions, and we actually get this one quite a lot, is travel insurance. What do I need for travel insurance? What are the requirements? Do I need it for my visa? Do I need it for my scouting trip? Do I need it when I go back home to the United States? Mm, yeah, definitely need to have, per the, the visa application, you need to have travel insurance to cover you during your uh, trip over here. And it covers you, you know, obviously during your SEP appointment, things like that. And to, when you get residency, then you can go ahead and get uh, your, your regular insurance and you can join into the public health care, care system at that right. time too. So the travel insurance that you need when you're applying for your visa mm -hmm. is you'll have to show proof that you have, usually it's four months, but some people are actually asked to provide six months worth of coverage. That coverage is up to you know $30,000 worth of coverage. You've got to have reparation, meaning if you pass away before you get your residency, your body is obviously going to be shipped back to the United States kind of important, mm -hmm. or whatever country you're from. So we used AXA for that. They had um, a decent price and a fairly good program that's offered. We also used travel insurance when Alan went back for the month to spend some time in the United States recently but to make sure that you bring travel insurance when you come for your scouting okay. trip, unless you're still working and you're actually covered. So just check with your healthcare provider there in the United States before you leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see, next question on our list today is wills. This is an interesting one. Um, you know, understanding what, what you need or don't need with regards to U.S. and Portugal can be the same when it comes to wills as it does with taxes. So mm -hmm. you wanna jump in Yeah, there? basically if you've got a U.S. will, it's, it's, it's honored and taken care of for one year in the U.S. And you'll need to consult uh, Portuguese attorney and set up a Portuguese will to be honored in Portugal as well, and then that will would be valid in Portugal. Right, so. we're, but we're not we're not legal consultants. No. We do have our tax attorney and our um, regular attorney in our Patreon listing uh, for you to contact. But just keep in mind, just like taxes, you're going to need a U.S. person and you're going to need a Portuguese, um, Portuguese person. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget, we have t-shirts we should have done this sooner mm -hmm. it'll be fun yeah thanks okay. see you next time <laughs>